understanding what type of fuel you're using will help you to tune properly to get the most amount of horsepower out of your engine. Now, ethanol is an add fuel additive used here in the U.S. and other countries around the world, and it varies from anywhere from 10% all the way up to 85% here in the U.S. Now, legally, you cannot use anything more than 85% ethanol. However, in some racing conditions, they are using 100% ethanol-based fuel. Now, ethanol is largely based off of corn here in the U.S. In other parts of the world, it's used, uh, sugar cane is used to draw uh, out the ethanol content from it. However, when you go to the pump and it says that it's 10% ethanol, is that actually the amount of ethanol that's in the fuel? And there is a really simple, easy test to test actually how much ethanol is in the fuel that you are pumping right then and there. Not what the sign says on it, but how much ethanol is in it at the time you're taking it from the pump. So let's quickly talk about the problems with ethanol fuel because there are plenty of them, but this is the top three problems that ethanol fuel brings to a gasoline-based fuel. The first is the most difficult one is it's very caustic and corrosive. So typically newer vehicles have a flex fuel uh, type of rating, which means the rubber seals, the fuel tank, the lines, uh, everything that the fuel comes in contact with is rated for that caustic or corrosive nature of the ethanol fuel. On older vehicles, if you have an older muscle car or an 80s vehicle where ethanol was not used in fuel at all, that alcohol that's in the ethanol itself is very caustic. It eats away at seals. It eats away at, at gaskets. It re eats away at O-rings, and eventually it destroys the pot metal that carburetors were made out of. Uh, it's very, very caustic, very, very corrosive, and if the fuel system's not rated for it, there is problems that will occur. The second thing about ethanol that is horrible is that it tracks water like crazy. Uh, ethanol and water are two, is a positive and a negative. They attract to each other very quickly, very easily, and the ethanol hangs onto the water in the system. So if you've got fuel that's been sitting around for a while, if you're in a wet environment or if you get any type of humidity in the air, that ethanol will draw that out of the air and into the tank. Uh, it's very, very nasty when you're trying to deal with the performance side of things to deal with now having to tune fuel and the additional water and garbage that's going through the system. So the water and the other contaminants that ethanol attracts is a big problem with ethanol. The third is one that no one ever really thinks about, and that's how much ethanol is in the fuel. You you don't know that. If the sign on the pump says it's 10% ethanol or E85 ethanol or E15 or whatever, you're under the assumption that it's actually 10% ethanol in the in the ground coming out of the pump. Is it actually? Is that actually what you're getting? And that's what we're going to look at today is I'm going to go to a couple of different gas stations. I'm going to pump fuel directly from it, mark it, and then we'll come back and we'll test actually how much ethanol is in each one of these pumps. Now to keep all this separate, I went out and bought three brand new gas cans, and each time that I run a test, I will clean the, the can out, uh, make sure that there's no fuel uh, left in it, let it air out, make sure that there's no um, residual fuel or ethanol left in it from the last time. But this for this test here, these are three brand new uh, tanks, uh, gas cans that I picked up. Uh, we'll label each one, and then when we get to the station, I will label it by the station or by probably a number, and then what the octane rating was that we pumped, and we'll see how much ethanol was each in each one of these. But for now, we're starting with brand new, empty, clean gas cans. So I went to three different gas stations and pumped their highest octane fuel from each one. Now, it was about a 60-mile round trip, so the thought was to get far enough away from different gas stations that maybe they were delivered fuel at different times of the week or different days, whatever, or even by different companies. So the thought process was that we'd see if the variance was going to be any different between different gas stations. So I didn't stick to one area. It was a pretty broad trip that I made. So let's take a little road trip and start heading to gas stations.
So here's the procedure for each fill up. I'm going to get a new can. I will mark it with the number of the station and what octane rating that pump has. There's a couple of different high octane ratings here in the state of Mississippi and Tennessee. So I will annotate what the, uh, what the octane rating is. Then I will pump fuel from the pump to clear whatever was in the hose. So I'll run a couple of gallons through it, make sure that there's nothing residual in there. If it was 87 octane or the mid-grade stuff, I just want the higher octane fuel. I'll pump a few uh, gallons into the tank, and then I will pump a few into the gas can uh, for use as testing. And I will do this at all three gas stations. Okay, now that we're back in the shop, one thing that is very, very, very important is you are working with fuel here. So make sure that you're in a well-vented area. I've got my flex light uh, fan uh, cruising and kicking uh, all the fumes out the door. I've got the garage door wide open. I will be wearing safety glasses. Take the precaution to not get yourself in any trouble here. You're working with raw fuel. So if we take a look at the three cans that we pumped, it's station one, it's 93 octane. Station two is 93 octane. And station number three is actually 92 octane. We'll see if that makes any difference in the amount of ethanol that's in these fuels. Now these are one gallon cans. There is about half to three quarters of a gallon in each one of these. So it's a, it's a good enough sample size after we cleaned it out of the hose to make sure that we get a good sample. Now let's talk about the test vial here that we're going to use uh, to measure the ethanol. This is a very inexpensive item you can buy on Amazon. I will leave a link to it down below that you can use to tell how much ethanol is in the fuel that you have. Very small sample size. If you look on here, you fill a very small amount of water at the bottom of this, and then the rest is filled up with fuel, will agitate it and it will tell us what our ethanol content is in the fuel based on how much is in the fuel and the water that it mixes with. So the first thing and a very key part of this is to make sure you get the exact amount of water that it calls for in here. Now I'm going to overfill it a little bit here um, and then I typically will dump some of it out just till I get the right amount of water uh, in here. So it's kind of a, a hit or miss type of thing, but you've got to be very careful that it has the exact amount of water in it right on the line. That way you can produce that same amount every single time, and that way you will get a consistent reading of actually how much ethanol is in the fuel. Now the question is, is why do you, you put water in here and mix it with the fuel? 
it is because we talked about earlier that ethanol is very, very, very attracted to water. So as you shake and agitate up the fuel with a water mixture in it, the ethanol chemicals that are in the fuel currently will now attract itself to the water that you added to it. And that is what we're going to measure at the end when it's all together. So this is the process. We'll take you through step by step on how we do it. So this is sample number one. Now we don't need to do anything crazy with it. The fuel is already mixed. I will pour just a small amount into a glass measuring cup. It's got a little funnel on it or a little spout on the end that helps uh, uh, fill up the, uh, the container fairly easily. Now you need to fill up the fuel on this one right to the bottom of the uh, uh, where the cap goes. So we're going to fill it fairly full of fuel. But again, consistency is the key here. As long as you continue to do it the same every single time, the exact amount isn't as critical as just getting it where the instructions say that it needs to be at this one. It's just kind of at that little bend in the glass, and that's where we're going to fill it up to. Now, once you put the cap back on it and it's sealed back up, all you need to do is shake this for about 10 to 15 seconds to really break everything up. Make sure the water and the fuel get mixed together well, and the water will draw the ethanol out of the fuel, and it will start to settle at the bottom of it. Now, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Sometimes it goes fairly quickly. I can tell right now this first sample is going to take a little bit longer, which tells me there's some more contaminants in this fuel than normal. Now, this took a couple extra minutes for that ethanol water solution to settle at the bottom. But at the bottom of this vial, you can see the line there where it says 10%. Um, that tells you how much ethanol is in the fuel. The next line above that is 20%. So it's not very finite down there. We can talk about how to get that with a larger container, but for this small sample vial, that tells us that there is approximately 10% ethanol in the fuel, just as it was rated at the pump. So I would say that this is good to go to, to tune for a 10% ethanol mix. So these are results from the test one. So we de determined there's about 10% ethanol in here. This is a 93 octane gas that really doesn't have any bearing on how much ethanol is in there. But that's how this test is conducted. That's how it works. Um, we're just trying to mix the ethanol with the water, and it gives us a determination of how much ethanol. In this case, this sample, 10% right where you need to be. So we're going to continue to conduct this test on the other two samples. I will speed that timeline up a little bit to go a bit quicker, but certainly uh, this sample here, you can tell that there's a little bit of contamination in there. It doesn't break uh, apart uh, and settle as quickly as uh, uh, some other samples that, that I've seen before. So uh, I think there's either a different type of ethanol or there's some different uh, contamination in here. But either way, we're going to rifle through these other two tests really quick. We'll show you what the results are and uh, we'll summarize it all here at the end.
unfortunately, the battery died in my action camera, and I didn't really get a chance to film this last one. But this is fuel from a gas can that I've had sitting at my house for most of the summer. I bought it probably earlier in the year, February, March, maybe. So it was probably the E15 fuel anyway. But you can see either it has picked up a lot of contaminants or it was 5% over, it looks like. You know, that may be just additional water that that fuel's picked up or whatnot. But that is E15 fuel. I know it because I bought it during the winter months. And I'm fairly certain down here in Mississippi where I buy most of my fuel that it's E15. I will have to verify that. But that is probably a good 5%, maybe a little more over 5% of water and garbage that's gotten into that fuel. So either it was mixed improperly at the time, which I, I doubt it. I mean, it seems to be fairly consistent around here. It has been anyway. But uh, it's very possible that that came out of the pump that way. Um, I guess I'll never know, but I will not use that fuel um, not for anything. It'll go in my lawnmower. It's not going to go into any of my cars. That's for sure. So that's what it'll look like when you are above that line. And in this case, that E15 fuel that this was is way, way over 15% ethanol. So what did we learn from all this? At least for a very small sample size, the ethanol fuel here has been consistent, at least on the higher octane fuel. Uh, it was 10% across the board for three different gas stations. That doesn't mean 100% of the time it always will be, but certainly I had good results on this one. And you can kind of see how the test was run. Um, this little vial is very, very inexpensive. And like I say, it is a nice little tool to have when you aren't 100% certain of the type of fuel that you're putting in your, your engine. Um, so it's very cost effective, very easy to do, very easy to take a small sample, measure what you're actually working with. That way on the tuning side, you'll know exactly what you're working with. Again, I'll drop a link to this down below, uh, so you can, uh, take a look at it on Amazon. I think this one was 10 bucks. Maybe, um, there's ones that are certainly much more expensive than that, but for what this test is, it's very inexpensive. Now you can build this little vial at home. Um, I may leave some instructions down in the description below on how to measure that out to do it. But uh, certainly if you use a measuring cup out of your wife's kitchen, don't tell her about it or uh, don't use it again since it's had fuel in it. But anyway, neither here nor there. Like I said, if you liked the video, please do me a favor, hit the like button, drop me a comment below, whatever it is. And uh, hey, I appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you on the next one.